I'm Tony. I'm Sue's youngest daughter. <sighs> I can do this. So um, my whole life, my mom told me I have to sing at her funeral, <laughs> which is kind of creepy and weird. <laughs> but um, I promised her I would my whole life. And we have this song that I sang at her 50th birthday party and um, kind of became our song. And during her sickness, I sang this to her all the time. And she would sing it with me. So my cousin Bethy is going to play with me, and she actually played at her 50th birthday party, and we did this together then, and we can do this together now. What do you give to the lady who has given all her life and love to you. What do you give to the reason you are living? I could window shop the world before I'm through. Mama, a sunrise, mama. A sunrise, mama, the moon to wear. That's not good enough, no, not good enough, not for mama. Mama, a palace, diamonds like doorknobs, mountains of gold to spare. That's not rich enough, no, not rich enough, not for mama. Mama, a lifetime crowded with laughter, that's not long enough, not half long enough. What can I give you that I can give you? What will your present be? Mama young and beautiful, always young and beautiful. That's the mama. I'll always see. That's for Mama with love from me. I love you, Mommy. David Mizmor, La Donai Haaretz Umloa, Tevel Vyoshveva, Kihu Al Yamim Yasada, Vial Nahorot Yhoneneha, Miya Ale Bahar Adonai, Umiya Kum Bim Kom Kacho, Neki Chapaim Uvar Levav, Asher Lona Sala Shav Nafshi Velonish Bala Mirma, Yisav Raham Eit Adonai, Utsdaka Melohisho. The earth is the Lord's with all of its fullness. The world is the Lord's, with all of its inhabitants. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in the holy place? She who has clean hands and a pure heart. She will receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from the God of deliverance. Mizmor le David Adonai Roi lo echsar binoteshe yarbitseni Alme menuchot yin haleni. Nafshi yeshovev, yan cheni vamagle tzedek laman shemo. 
Gam ki elech v'geit salmavet, lo ira ra, ki ata imadi. Shiftacha umishantecha hema yinachamuni. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He has me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He guides me on paths of righteousness. He revives me for the sake of his glory. Though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no harm, for you are with me. Your staff and your rod, they comfort me. You set a table inside of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall abide in the house of the Lord forever. I had an appointment to meet uh, your family on Friday. I, I wasn't, it wasn't just a family, though, that came to see me. It was a whole city that came to see me. It was a uh, corporation. It was, uh, it was a team. It was a team. It was an empire. And what I saw was loyalty. I saw a fierce loyalty. I saw loving loyalty and a great pride because your parents obviously created in you a culture of togetherness, a mentality of I've got your back and I will forever have your back. And that stayed with you. An ethic of we're all in this together. Sue brought energy into your life. Your mother did. She brought a love of life. She brought a zest for life. And she saw everything in terms of the positives. She had certainly experienced illness in life of loved ones and of herself. She had experienced loss. Who could have begrudged her if she had displayed a cynicism about life? Who could have begrudged her a little skepticism about life? Who could have blamed her for being negative or for being bitter? But it was the farthest thing from her mind. For her, life was about moving forward. Life was about believing in yourself. Life was about being able to accomplish things. Maybe that's why she never left you off the hook, let you off the hook about missing school, right? You had to be, you had to be pretty sick to miss a day of school. Maybe she was teaching you, you can do it. You should be able to do it. Or perhaps over time, Sue had recognized how precious life really is, how precious every day really is, and that you just don't waste a day because there's too much to do. There's too much to save her. I know your mother had engaged in a modeling career. She had lived in Europe. She had been international as a model. She had modeled in Cleveland. And I know that modeling normally reflects a certain physical appearance. She was a beauty, a very attractive woman. She had charisma about her, and she was physically striking. But that's really only one way of modeling. I think your mother, your grandmother, for the grandkids, I think that she modeled for you something more important than looks, something more important than outward beauty. What she modeled was, was a certain style of character. She never spoke poorly about anybody. She never had a bad word to say about anybody. She was not cynical. Other people complained. Sue was too busy living to have time to complain. Sue didn't talk about doing good things. She just did the good things. She was very modest. She didn't brag. She didn't lecture. She led by example. That's what she modeled. What is that saying? While other people complain that it cannot be done, be the one who gets it done. You watched her take care of her parents in their older years, in their vulnerable moments. She did it. She took care of them. Of course she knew life was unfair. OK, now what are we going to do? <coughs> Half of life is about showing up, and your mother always showed up. And it was more than showing up. When she was with you, the atmosphere was different. She was fun. She was the cool mother and the cool grandmother. She was never out of style. She was never old fashioned. She remained relevant and connected at all times. A great listener with an uncanny ability to make you feel that her attention, her focus was on you and entirely on you at that moment. She showed her feelings for you in her actions. Your mother and your father, they were not identical personalities, but they truly loved and respected each other. There was definitely a chemistry between them that developed quickly. And both your mother and your father knew and appreciated that life is meant to be lived and life is meant to be savored. I'm going to teach you a Jewish law today. If a funeral procession and a wedding procession 
meet on the road in an intersection. Which goes first? Which has the right of way? What do you think? The wedding procession has the right of way. Not out of disrespect to the deceased, but because of Judaism's love of life, because of Judaism's respect for the living. We take care of each other when we truly need each other, which is when we're alive. And that's how we move forward. That's how you all came to be right here. Because you're Jewish. And your faith tells you that you place the wedding, the continuity of life, in front of the funeral. That's what your mom and dad modeled for you. And that's what you've done ever since. Your mother showed you great strength inside. Your mother modeled independence. She had a strong will. She had a plan for everything. She planned Mother's Day in January. And she has hundreds of notes that testify to her advanced planning. And as you said, she had a plan for this funeral. She had a plan for life, not just a plan for death. She had a plan for life. And her plan for life was to value relationships. I think with, your, with Sue, everything was about relationships. In addition to her family, she savored the relationships she forged and the accomplishments she was part of as part of Heights Youth Theater. She loved it as producer, as choreographer, ultimately running the whole show, running the whole project. She helped empower others. She helped bring the joy of theater into the community. And I thought of her love for the youth theater. You know, she must have known best of all that real life is sometimes very different than a stage. I mean, I know we say life imitates art, that may be true, but in the theater there's a script. You follow the script, you read the lines. The ending is already written. It's not that way in real life. In real life, we don't know how the script is going to be. We don't write the whole script. We, none of us write our whole script. But we certainly choose our lines in response to the script we have. Sue chose her lines well. She chose her character well. And she responded to life in a way that endeared her to her parents and her children and her grandchildren and many of you here. And you watched the play of her life unfold, and you learned. And that's why you took such wonderful care of her, such important and dignified care of her. You kept her connected to family events and things important to her. You gave her the love that she had always modeled for you. You didn't brag. You simply gave the love that she had taught you. She lived with a good name. She died with a good name. I want to call on Jamie. So we go from the youngest to the oldest, and uh, it's funny, my mom told me my entire life not to sing at her funeral, so. <laughs> so you won't, have to, you won't have to put up with that. Memorial Day this year will always hold special meaning for us. In addition to remembering the men and women that defend our country, it was the day that we realized that our mother's remaining time with us would be short. And so we began our vigil with the resolve to, meet, to bring meaning and comfort to her last few days of life. As I learned with my father's death almost three years ago, it's hard to talk about someone's life in totality, to try to capture a person's essence in just a few short words. For him, I felt I had some things that needed to be said, so the words came a little easier. For my mother, known as Sue, Suzanne, Susie, Susie Q, and even Susie Cusey, it was a little harder <laughs> to find the right words to capture her full life, and what an incredible one it was. From the beginning, Mom had a unique spirit. There was no looking back for her, only ahead of whatever life happened to put in her path. She had a certain sense of adventure, while as a young Jewish woman in post-war Germany, she became a mother for the first time. That's where I come into the story, by the way. After becoming a successful model in, six, in the 60s, Mom quite suddenly became the mother of five, and then six, and put her career on hold as family became everything to her. This must have taken its toll because years later, Sister Steph recalls being told, if you are ever going to have kids, just have one. <laughs> but we all know how well that turned out. <laughs> the man she chose to live her life with was Gimpy Fromson, a fiery, larger-than-life character that became her partner in raising the six of us. Not an enviable task. While Dad wore his heart on his sleeve, Mom's heart was just below hers. Not quite so obvious or emotional, she was nonetheless the true quiet strength of her family, 
counterpart to dad's hard charging nature. Her life was not without hardship as she endured the loss of a young brother, a husband, and a battle with breast cancer. As if this were not enough, she could always take comfort in the fact that she had the six of us to take care of. But with indomitable spirit, she found a way to make it all work, as well as her 52-year marriage to Gippy. Mom was a lover of the arts, and in particular, musical theater. She had a strong belief in education and community, and became the director of Heights Youth Theater, a run somewhat off-Broadway that lasted for over 20 years. She touched the lives of countless young children, many of whom went on to have successful careers in theater on their own. And it truly was a family affair, with Mom running the show, my grandparents Manny and Rhoda selling tickets and candy, Tony in starring role after starring role, <laughs> and thankfully for Mom, I did not sing a single note. Mom's love of family was deep, and particularly she loved her grandchildren, all 18 of them, who are here today for her. She was the perfect grandmother, treating each of them as if they were special, yet never being judgmental in any way. Mom had a wonderful sense of humor that we all enjoyed. It was important to her upon her passing that we celebrate her life and the beautiful memories that we have, rather than dwell on our grief. So with nothing but good intentions in mind, I'd like to describe last Wednesday. We received a call at 6 a.m. that things were close to the end, so we all raced over to gather at the apartment. Amazingly, Mom rallied, and we stayed by her side, eating Geraci's pizza until later on that day when what can best be described as a Jewish fire drill took place. We suddenly hear a very loud, heavily accented Russian voice telling us, I don't do Russian, but there is a fire on your floor. Leave the premises immediately. Do not use the elevators. Go to the nearest stairwell. We hear this over and over again. It must have been at least 100 decibels. I look at mom sitting in her chair, totally immobile. I look at my sisters. I look at the nurses. We all look at each other. And then all hell breaks loose. Tony and Steph disappear down the stairs. Polly and I run to mom, thinking about how we're going to get her downstairs. Patty starts running around the floor looking for signs of fire. <laughs> and, we're, and we're basically stuck. If the trauma didn't do mom in, I thought the loud Russian voice might. So I took a mop and held a pillow up to the emergency speaker for 20 minutes until it finally stopped. <laughs> Crisis averted, or so I thought. We all breathed a sigh of relief, and a few of us went home for a short break. As soon as I turned into my driveway, I get another call from Polly to come, come over quickly, that Tony was on her way too. I immediately turn around, and when I got there, Mom was receiving tension, and we all stood by her side, but again she rallied. So I go to her bedroom to make a call when I glance over to see the hospice nurse wheeling Mom in. Only I realize it's not m Mom, but Tony in the wheelchair with a bag of frozen vegetables on her head. I thought, now what? Well, it seems Tony had a panic attack, so all hell breaks loose for a second time. <laughs> Polly and the nurse are now taking care of Tony in the bedroom. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, who's taking care of Mom? <laughs> so things finally calmed down, and we're normal again. Well, at least mostly, if you consider a caregiver almost fainting, an overflowing toilet, and a dead car battery, nothing out of the ordinary. I had the distinct feeling that somewhere Dad was looking down on the whole thing laughing. Mom passed away peacefully that night after Greg arrived with all of us gathered around her. Through it all, the silver lining was that the six of us got a chance to spend time together over the last week. A lot of it, probably the most since we all had lived together on 21049 Shaker Boulevard. And uh, maybe this was really what Mom had in mind for us in the first place. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the caregivers and nurses, Doreen, Jeanette, Fran, Luana, Marie, Erica, and Lana that helped take care of our parents over the last six years. We couldn't have done this without them, and we will always be grateful to you. My deepest gratitude as well to my sisters for running the equivalent of a small company named Gimpy and Sue over the last few years. And finally, our thanks to all of you here today, many from far away, to honor our mother, our mother with us. I'd like to end by leaving you with two final thoughts from my mother, Sue, who left these to us in her handwritten notes. The first was one of her life's goals, which was simply to teach my sons and daughters the skills to make of their own lives what they wish. And the second, which was the unshakable belief in my own power to take care of myself. Thank you, Mom. You were a treasure to us all. We will always love you. I, Lou. Sue's sister.
whether uh, I live 1,500 miles away from my sister or now 3,000 miles away. For so long, it's always been, sister, sister, I'm going to blow you a kiss, and I want you to tell me where you get it. Here it comes. Mm -hmm. Now, where did you catch it? And she would always say, on the right side of my tush. <laughs> For years, I was always throwing her a kiss, and she would throw me a kiss back. Mwah! I caught it. I'm going to put it in my pocket and carry it with me all day. That was my relationship with the telephone with my sister. And through the years, life presented itself different answers, but it was always you catch it? I caught it on the, and sometimes the words wouldn't come out. But believe me, she never forgot the word tush. <laughs> I do want to say that up until about a month ago, I would throw her that same kiss, and, and in the most faint way, I swear to you, I heard the word tush fond memories, fond memories. Sister, my promise to you is that I will always come back to Cleveland annually to love your family and the continued memories of this place. Patty? Uh, many of you know that for the past eight to ten years or so, my brothers and sisters and I have had a, the significant responsibility of ensuring that our parents were loved and cared for regardless of their illnesses or idiosyncrasies. We tried to make their lives as meaningful and as comfortable as we possibly could. A few lived in Florida and the rest of us traveled back and forth to Florida for as long as we could so they could stay in the beautif their beautiful home in the sunshine until there came a time when we had to bring them home so we could keep a close eye on them. I want to just take a minute and thank the most beautiful women who came into our lives and allowed our parents to live as rich and wonderful lives as they could and to die with peace and with the dignity that they so richly deserved. We are grateful beyond words to you ladies. We six kids are all so different, and those differences allowed us to each use our strengths to provide mom and dad with everything they needed. I want to thank our spouses and our children for their support, love, and kindness to mom and dad and to us. Thank you for giving us the time and space so that we could devote ourselves to our parents. When we could, I, I want to take one minute and say when we would complain growing up about unfair treatment, mom always said, life's not fair. So in that vein, I want to thank my sister Steph in particular. She watched over mom and dad 24-7, year after year, literally, by way of a camera that we had in mom's apartment on her big com computer screen in her kitchen and via the cell phone. She not once in all those years complained about how difficult it was to make sure that there was always someone with mom and dad keeping them safe. And w um, the only complaint she ever had was if she felt that someone was not taking good enough care of mom and dad. I want to thank David and my nieces and nephews for your patience, for letting Steph do this for us. Your mom is a fierce protector of those whom she loves, and you are lucky to have her. The six of us and our spouses are as close as any siblings can be. We love, we fight, we love again. Our children are not only cousins, but they are the best of friends. Mom and Dad taught us well, and I think they would be proud of us today. And now from grandchildren, Adam, Andrew, and Ashley.
My grandma was a really spectacular one. I could tell you about a thousand special moments, an endless amount of silly quirks that she possessed. But what I really want to showcase are a couple things that made her who she was to me. She set the bar immeasurably high for grandmas everywhere in terms of loving her grandkids and her family. When I was 10 years old, my cousins and I were told that we had a photo shoot at grandma's. Our moms had us dressed in our best and we headed over to grandma and grandpa's. One by one, each cousin posed and smiled for photos taken in front of a white background. We didn't know what her intentions were until a few weeks later when we went back over to her house and she proudly showed off a miniature statue of each grandchild lined up next to one another and on display. She loved us so much that she literally made tiny statues of us to stand in her home. <laughs> Looking back now, I recognize that her genuine adoration for her family fueled all these creative means in which she could express that love and adoration. I didn't, meet, I didn't need many friends as a young kid because for me I had a built-in crew of cousins and siblings that spent so much time together thanks to my grandmother's insistence. It's now that I look back and see that she made the times we spent together so fun and enjoyable and I recognize how infinitely lucky I was that she placed such an emphasis on family first. Instead of sitting around and watching TV, the grandkids at her encouragement would put on a play for the adults which typically starred Aaron wearing a wig and dressed as the princess. <laughs> the family vacations that she organized once a year trumped everything. It was always the best week of the year, every detail carefully planned out by Grandma Sue. One year we were going on a cruise and she had a t-shirt made for every single member of the family to don throughout the trip. She proudly handed one to each of us on the first night and for the better part of a week there were 30 plus people on a cruise ship wearing the same shirt displaying a large photo of my grandpa's smiling face printed on the front. <laughs> Needless to say, it was never hard to find one another over the course of that week. It was details like those that made my grandma so different and unique, and she always went the extra mile, making our memories that much more special and hilarious. She taught me that having a, a bit of a vulgar sense of humor was just fine. She had many hobbies at any given time in her life. She had more hobbies and interests than most people have over the course of their life. One of these hobbies came in the form of doll making. It was a really intricate and slow process to create a handmade doll from start to finish, beginning with sewing the doll together, painting its facial features, and adding hair and little clothes. She made one for each grandkid, but her favorite one was a female doll with a hole in the back of its pants, mooning whoever walked by it. Anytime someone pointed it out, it made her laugh, and in turn, everyone in the room was laughing over this doll with its tush hanging out. <laughs> it was this balance of traits that made my Grandma Susie who she was. It amazes me that she found so much time to balance all the things she loved between her hobbies, her ongoing work with theater, travel and trip planning, and most importantly, her large brood of family that, she was, that was always growing. She found ways to make each and every one of us feel special and loved, she ingrained the importance of being together as a family and kept us laughing till it hurt the whole way through. Hi, I'm uh, Andrew. I'm Greg's second born. Um, for, for a couple of days, I've been thinking about what you could say in a short speech about my grandma. It's impossible. She was such an incredible woman that would be, it would do an injustice to summarize her in a few words. With that uh, being said, I found it appropriate to share some of my favorite things about my grandma, which I'm sure most of you will completely relate to. Susie was always one of my favorite people in the world. You can't put into words the aura she had when she walked into a room. She was not only so warm, but she was such a unique person. She was fun, exciting, smart, classy, and beautiful. She made you feel like a special person when you were around her. She used to come to our house almost every Saturday, and I would count down the days until she would come over. Sorry. When she would take us out to lunch on Saturdays, it was like being a kid on Christmas morning. Not that I really know what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my favorite memories of Susie were from her many hobbies that she mastered, as Ashley said. I used to go spend days with her during the summer at Heights Theater Camp and had the time of my life. It felt like I was the coolest kid in the world because I was her grandson. I felt like I was following around Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Everyone loved her. The way people adored her really told a story about the woman she was. 
We used to go to Chautauqua every summer, and she would take me, against my will, let me add, to all of her art classes and lectures. But once we got there, it was so fun that I forgot whatever chagrin I had against going there. Another memory I have uh, was her ability to take a teenage football playing boy like me to go build dolls with her. <laughs> and I sure had fun doing it. But that was Susie. No matter what you were doing, her persona shined on you and made you feel like whatever you were doing was the most amazing thing in the world and made you feel great doing it. When we were sitting with Rabbi Scoff reminiscing about all the great qualities of Susie, I realized we, le we left out something absolutely critical, her amazing laughing attacks. <laughs> if you never experienced one of these firsthand, it'll be hard for you to understand, but they were absolutely awesome. If you can imagine someone laughing so hard that there was no noise and it completely debilitated the rest of their body, that was it. <laughs> the funniest part about it is that they were usually about something not funny at all and probably <laughs> something morbid. <laughs> I recall many instances of her telling us that someone was getting surgery or was getting sick followed by a five minute uncontrollable <laughs> laugh session. <laughs> this brings me to my favorite story of Susie. I was in Frenchman's Creek, I think I was just with my brother and my dad. And we were going to uh, dinner at the clubhouse and Gimpy was getting a little bit older and Susie was kind of teasing him and kept telling him not to drive but he was like, Susie, I'm driving. <laughs> so we get in the car and Grandpa's going in reverse pretty fast and Susie, <laughs> Susie tells him to be quiet, <laughs> or her, excuse me, and uh, as he's going back pretty fast, he smashes into the trash can. <laughs> she starts laughing so hard you can't even imagine. Grandpa gets out of the car, leaves it in the middle of the street, and we see him zoom off in his golf cart. <laughs> this all while cars are beeping at us and Susie cannot stop laughing, so she can't get out of the car. People often ask me, why am I so calm? How do you handle things so well? I think I can, I can thank that to Susie. Uh, you know, my mom and I always used to joke about if you had a 100 degree fever and your feet were falling off, she would still make you get up and get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, that's a beautiful quality she had. She helped raise six kids and 18 grandkids while never really showing any of her worries. She had them, she had a lot of them, but she was a strong woman and, and had the ability to hide them and that's what makes people feel comfortable, makes them stronger themselves. She had an amazing life. She had great kids, a lot of grandkids, lived her lives, lived passions in her life, had three beautiful homes and traveled the world with grandpa. What could be better? The best may have been an easy one for some people to overlook, and my cousin Dylan called me last week and kind of reminded me of it. Her greatest accomplishment is the family that you see over there. Grandpa Gimpy and Susie created six children and 18 grandkids. That seems like a feat in itself, but they created a family that cannot be torn apart. They made sure that all of us got together several times a year, but more importantly created my best memories in life, which are our yearly trips. I know I can speak for all my cousins and say this was some of the best times of our lives and really shaped who we are today. My cousins are my best friends and I'm so thankful that I have them in my life. I've noticed it more than ever in the past couple of days when we've had everyone together and you can just look around and see all the love we have for each other and how much fun we have. While I will miss you, Susie, more than you ever can imagine, I thank you so much for everything you've done for all of us and made me who I am today. I'm not going to mourn. I'm going to celebrate her. I can hear her now telling me to stop crying and go on with the show. I can also hear her telling me to shave off this ugly beard. <laughs> She wants us all to celebrate her life and I will honor that for her. I guarantee you that grandpa and grandma, wherever they are now, are sitting on their porch swing in Chautauqua looking down on all of us, smiling and saying to themselves, wow, look what we've done, look what we created. Thank you for coming, I'll always love you, grandma. Hello everyone, my name is Adam. I am Greg's firstborn. <laughs> um, yeah, as, I mean, as everybody has been saying today, there are so many good memories from Susie. I mean, everyone has their own memory of her and everything is pretty much perfect. She was such an amazing woman. And especially for me, I will never forget, I mean, three, four times a week, we would always talk to each other and call each other, talk about what movies we've seen, how her bridge game was going, <laughs> how anything was happening. And I always loved the way that she made each event so special and so organized. One moment that I always remember and look forward to every year is on our birthday. She would always send a card, like 
months early <laughs> even sometimes and it would say in big capitalized bold letters do not open until february 27th <laughs> do not open and she had a very regimented life but she, everything she did was out of love and she made brought the best out of you and as they mentioned we took family trips every year and they were the greatest memories of my life because you could just the love in the room that we all have for each other is like visible you can just see it through everything and i'll never forget on one of our cruises one of the uh, the options was to have ballroom dancing. And I've never done this before. I mean, I'm, I've played football. I was kind of a jock guy in, <laughs> in high school. And ballroom dancing came up. And I knew how much grandma loved it. And I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. Why not? And for an hour or an hour and a half, as we spun around that ballroom, and I may have stepped on her feet a few times, <laughs> I never smiled so much in my life. And even to the day th at my wedding to my beautiful wife, Betsy, those memories that I had and that I learned there are with me. And that is Susie. Even though she's no longer here with us, she is always with us. The way she loved and the way she lived will always live in each and every one of you, in our hearts. From the, like, the, from the beautiful voice of Tony singing to the words of everyone up here today, Susie is here. Though she may not be here, she will always, always love us, always love all of you, and always be with us. And I couldn't thank any, anything more or be happier to have had her in my life. She was my best friend. She was my everything. And she is the reason. And she has made me who I am today. And I will never forget that. I love you, Grandma. Everybody. I'm Greg. For those who don't know you, you know me. And uh, I know this has been a long, wonderful. I know this has been a long, wonderful session for us. But my mom has asked the six of us. She wanted to plan this funeral. So I would like to read you a, an incredibly special note that she wrote. And I'm going to even give you a little side note before I begin. Mom said, I would like this to be read at my funeral by Greg, out loud, <laughs> no crying, and I mean it. Because of his good, innate, dramatic ability, and if he can't, Tony must do it without being weepy. <laughs> I kid you not. This is her handwriting. <clears throat> My mom says, let none of you weep for me, especially you with whom I've smiled, nor bow down your head in utter grief. Put on no mourning, as if the past induces forget and conceals all we've done together. We have lived, remember. Say not that I have died, not that this is death. Say that I have lived. Enjoying each mortal breath, we have learned and labored and wrought. What our hands found to do, we sought in quest to raise to nobler height. My life was blessed in the living. My death hallowed because of giving life to me was challenged. I was happy, so happy to live. In parentheses, this is also to be read slowly, <laughs> as it as it is me, to a T. I would rather have dreamed and never made it than to realize I was already living my dream. Love and happy dreams to all of you. That's my mommy. And just to finish, 
I'd like to read a short excerpt. Can't promise I won't not cry for this, Mom. A short excerpt that I wrote for my mom that will go with her in her final resting place. Mommy, I love you. I love you. I love you. I know that you want me to be strong, and I will. I just miss you so much. I'd, I'm not sure yet how to live without you. My heart aches. You are my world, my heart, my rock, my everything. You made me the man that I am. God blessed me with you as my mom and best friend. Every moment of my life from this point on, I will make you proud. I will teach my children, Adam, Andrew, Jordan, and Shay, how to live life like you lived life. I will live life, love life, and enjoy life with you as my angel. Please watch over me and be with me always in my heart. I will find a way to go on because that is what you would have wanted. I will celebrate your life every second of every day. I miss you, Mom. I hurt. I need you. Life is not the same without you. But this is not goodbye. We will always be together. I will see your smile and hear your laughter and feel your hugs every day of my life. I will forever cherish every second I was lucky, en lucky enough to spend with you. Now, Mom, go fly. Cont cont continue to do amazing things forever in God's kingdom. I love you. I love you. I love you. Sweet dreams, my beautiful Mom. Soar to new heights and be my angel forever. Let's rise for the memorial prayer. May we remember all of the worthy deeds that she performed in the land of the living. May she rest in peace, and we all say amen. Let's be seated. We want to offer our condolences to the family, to Jamie and Carolyn, Polly, Patty and Jeff, Greg and Tracy, Stephanie and David, Tony, uh, Sister Ailu and Robert, grandchildren, Adam, Daniel, Caroline, Claudia, Dylan, Griffin, Logan, Adam and Betsy, Andrew, Jordan, Shay, Ashley, Cameron, Carrie, Jesse, Catriel, Owen, and Joey. The family will be receiving friends for visitation at the Beach My Country Club immediately following the burial portion of the service, and that, will, that visitation will continue until 9 p.m. tonight. Uh, at this point, we will pause uh, to arrange the processional to move to the burial spot. Uh, please remain in your seats for another moment. The pallbearers, however, should now come forward. 